And uh, yeah, so we continue uh, this uh, amazing day. So this is the last block. I gave, I wrote a little reminded, uh, reminder yesterday that Mr. Marco Jimenez, uh, later on, uh, he was uh, sick very recently. And he wrote uh, three days ago, he was too weak to do this presentation, even to record it uh, on video. So he asked me to cancel, uh, to cancel this presentation. I didn't have time to to put it on the on the website on the program. So at seven o'clock, so we are going to listen to Suleiman Gerena uh, from Turkey, and then right after, instead of Marco Jimenez, we will go to Johannes Kochi talking about the heritage of Franz Richter. So uh, we are about to go two minutes uh, late um, to the presentation by Suleiman Gerena. Proposition of a new notation system for Turkish Makan music based on harmonic series. Suleiman Hakan. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, uh, good evening. Good evening. Hello. Uh, you digitally, virtually. Uh, he was born in Eskisehir in Turkey. He started playing guitar. Ah, uh, I forgot about this. Yeah, uh, playing guitar during his university years while he was studying engineering. He formed several bands with friends and took part in many projects until now. Kaimakli Ekmek Kadayifi, K-E-K, for his uh, first band, has given him the opportunity to perform in festivals and to be rewarded in some competitions. They recorded two demo albums consisting of their own compositions inspired by jazz, rock, and Turkish folk music. Then he was, uh, he's been part of um, FI Group, a Turkish classical music band he participated in by playing percussion for a while. He took a part in Fernando Perez Music in Turkey project by playing the Bendir and the Darbuka. After a while, he came back to the guitar in FI Group to play and arrange Turkish mus Makam music. He's actually currently study in a master program in Istanbul Technical University, Music Depar uh, Department Center for Advanced Studies in Music in microtonal guitar and working with uh, Dahan Çogulu, our dear friend. In the meantime, he's working as a software developer in a company. Uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Suleyman Görena. Hello, uh, I am uh, very excited to be here and thank you, you accept me here. And uh, this is my first, uh, I'm very new at the, this kind of thing. This is my first presentation in a uh, such a crowd. <laughs> so oh. forgive me if I <laughs> did something wrong. Uh, this is, uh, I last year, uh, after the 10 years engineering, I uh, accepted to Istanbul Technical University master program. I started uh, work with Tolga and Cholu, and this is my uh, final project. I want to, uh, uh, my aim is to define the Turk, especially for Turkish classical music and folk music, Turkish makam music, let's say, uh, to propose a new notation system. Uh, my aim is, uh, sorry. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to define uh, the, the pitches uh, by the uh, natural harmonics and without any temperament or something. So I firstly re represent the harmonics as a, as circles. In theory, it's a spiral. And uh, for example, this is the fundamental, and this is the first octave. Harm Every circle is the octave uh, of the harmonics. Uh, you, you can think this: if it is one hertz, two hertz will be second harmonic, three hertz will be third harmonic. So I'm mainly uh, representing the harmonics by the natural numbers. So this is uh, what I call this harmonic interval circles. Uh, this uh, I can uh, say that if we can think that uh, the circle's angle is uh, 360 
degree, but we can think that the one uh, to to make it similar to the cent, one hundred and then. Uh, 1200 cents for angle so every angle uh, I don't know if you can see the mouse here every angle will be will representing the in every uh, in every octal the uh, function of the harmonics for example this is the third harmonic and it's pop up in the second octal inter uh, uh, octal circle and the sixth will be the same so 12 will be the same and 24 will be the same function it is the perfect fifth of the fundamental so uh, I try to ch I choose uh, to represent the uh, Turkish music pits I choose the fourth octal intervals so from eight uh, harmonics to 16 harmonics I will use this as a uh, what I call is a interval based pits uh, interval based notation system but uh, these intervals can be uh, 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 will be used to represent a pitch according to a reference pitch. So, for example, I call the normal uh, Western notation system as a pitch-based notation system because every symbol and or symbol combinations is, uh, represent directly a, a, a pitch. I can. Uh, so uh, my aim is combine these two type of system. One is a, a pitch-based system, and the other is an interval-based system that I will be explain. Uh, define other pitches by using uh, by uh, showing references from the pitch-based system, and define the intervals from the interval-based system. So I take the fourth circle harmonic. Uh, to a line and this is these are the I'm sorry these are the number of the harmonics 8 9 10 to 16 the circled one is the I give a degree name for them to to be understand easily the first note two note the third note is the major third fifth is the perfect fifth and a minor seven major minor seven major seven I uh, because it is minor seven and major seven. I put a symbol to differentiate them. Seven plus is major seven. Eight is octave. So these uh, intervals and the combination of any intervals can be used to represent any other. Uh, say I called this scale is a natural scale. This four is uh, to define the. I take this from the fourth harmonic circle. If it is not enough, in the same uh, mentality, uh, it, the fifth circle of harmonics will be used to define intervals. So it will be then uh, from 16 to 32 uh, harmonics will be used. <coughs> I, uh, for Turkish music, I choose the reference system, uh, uh, Pythagorean system, because it is very rigid by the fifth perfect fifth and perfect four uh, intervals but they are coming from the uh, second octave harmonics and very rigidly they are related to each other the name notation system is uh, i want to define is main idea is <coughs> Uh, without any acceleration, this note will be uh, alter, alteration. Without any alteration symbols, this note will be uh, from the reference system. For example, uh, 12, uh, a cool temperament system or Pythagorean system. If, but if you want, and uh, these two numbers will define the intervals between the these harmonics. Uh, I can show normal harmonic scale, uh, the natural scale, like that notation. So this soil is will be the zero cent. Uh, I want to warn you. I write here uh, the the reference system is twelve tone. Uh, to be understood, I write it to the references. The alterations are from the. According to the 12 equal tone, 
but I will later when I will talking about Macams I will use Pythagorean system so uh, this is the soil without any alteration the first uh, x is, is 2 think that this uh, law will be the second degree of the natural scale and the one here is that I call y x y and x is saying that the node will be the uh, second degree of the natural scale and uh, saying that alter yourself according to the one that means uh, alter yourself according to the first degree of the natural scale so if, if la is uh, two second degree one will be sol so it will arrange itself according to sol to make a nine over eight interval and uh, for example third is the same these all notes are prepared to uh, prepare their self altering their self as uh, according to the soil from the reference system then in this case it's 12 equal ton but it is uh, I can also uh, at, at here I can also uh, say reference point is not always have to be fundamental this time here I write the same scale but the reference point is now the third degree of the natural scale so this time C is uh, from the reference uh, notation system C then for example there is let's look at Do it's 4 3 now it's it's telling that the Do is the fourth uh, degree of the natural scale and adjust yourself according to the third uh, as third degree of the natural scale as if it is from the uh, Pythagorean scale for example uh, so uh, this will guarantee that from uh, is, if Do is the fourth C will be the third if uh, third is the natural uh, third is the reference point from the 12 tonicule or Pythagorean it will adjust itself to guarantee uh, 11 and 11 over 10 ratio this is another uh, showing this time the fifth of the natural scale is the reference point now I will uh, show uh, some Macam scales or usage uh, I use Moose Iki program Moose uh, 2 uh, at Kemal Karaosmanoğlu's uh, the, the project in the software you can adjust any kind of uh, symbols and how they adjust the uh, alter the how much sand lower or uh, I did uh, kind of every possible uh, symbols here and I uh, will I will make you listen some of the songs that I will after after I tell about this for example the Ushak Perde uh, systems let's say Ushak flavor is based on the law this P this time I will uh, write these alterations here according to the Pythagorean system so this this P means that this is a pitch from the Pythagorean system this N says that this uh, it's it's not uh, it is the from the natural scale so p is la uh, ushak is has a cadence on la and let's first look at this I, i'm saying that that c uh, the fourth degree of the natural scale and three will be the 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 uh, reference system so so if it is for law will be the so reference point is here so this note here guarantees that uh, that I uh, draw a line to show the uh, distances from that this arrow is show this uh, 165 cents from law 
Another alternative could be defining this Sega pitch according to this Pythagorean pitch uh, according to Do. So it's saying that if I am the fourth degree and my reference point will be the fifth degree. So it is now guarantees the 12 or 11 cents. I think uh, these uh, very close uh, pitches can be used both in uh, Ushak scale or we will see there is lots of other uh, pitches will, can be uh, defined uh, here. In Turkey they call it uh, this area is a Mujennep area. They are saying that we, we can use every kind of uh, too many uh, pitches from this area. But I'm trying to explain all possible ways which the what will be the exact pitch. So this is for Ushak maybe, and I uh, there's a uh, some measurements about that. Uh, according to that measurements uh, from Boris Boskurt's article, they found a very close autopic en uh, envelope value for the, that Ushak pitch pitch for these. It is very close to uh, 165. So th this will be used, I think, in uh, the traditional uh, playing. Another kind of Ushak Perde will be the 6-5. This time this C is uh, adjusting yourself according to La. And then this is the 6th degree of the uh, natural scale and this will be the fifth degree and this is the reference point as a Pythagorean scale then I guarantee the uh, 139 cents here this is a, a special case I think and the fifth uh, so this Pythagorean uh, law is a fifth of the ray uh, also and uh, the sixth note is cannot be uh, it it's kind of a function that I think uh, a leading tone, but the reverse leading tone, not the decreasing leading tone. When you come to this note, you have to go to the A note because you cannot go the otherwise because it is not the uh, stable point. But the one uh, fundamental and the fifth is the because of its uh, the stable point is a kind of low energy point. This has to be fall to that. That's why in Ushak or Husseini or other kind of flavors, uh, performers using to when they come to a cadence, a, a powerful cadence, they always using this this note here, mostly by glissando from here to this note, and come back to for la to cadence. This is also a kind of uh, okay with the measurements, but this time I take this time it is a topic envelope and a topic average. I think this is about the glissando thing. This, first I take the topic envelope, then a topic average. Now I taking it's. I think the glissando uh, effect is changing some measurements thing. And another Mujennep uh, area Segah perdesi is uh, using uh, directly a major third according to Sol. Uh, it's using in Rast Makan. Uh, so this is the third degree and adjust yourself according to first degree. So you will adjust itself according to Sol. So uh, minus 22 cents will be lower and also I can also define this exact pitch uh, by coincidence it is the same thing with another notation this time I'm 
using the reference pitch as do. Now I'm saying that if uh, if the C is the major natural major seven, adjust yourself according to the do, and these are the same points. Bu salip perdesi is exactly the uh, uh, from Pythagorean scale. Uh, this, because it is a Pythagorean scale, the, the the affecting pitch is uh, this is me. This is a fifth of something, so this is a fifth of the me. Also, uh, there's a charge pitch can be changed, but uh, in Turkish traditional theory that is, uh, nobody is uh, uh, I didn't heard any kind of alteration in charga the do the pitch but I think it could be because of this uh, notation that showed me uh, if uh, I can say that if uh, Yeah, I put uh, four three here for uh, 165 cents. If it is the fourth degree of the natural scale, and if it is the third degree, then I can use the fifth degree of the natural scale. So here is could be directly from the natural scale. So uh, also here is the fundamental, which is, which it is adjusted according to this note. La, because of it's saying that adjust yourself according to the third note. So this is this could be directly from the uh, if I uh, alter a little bit the charge perde, this could be directly from the natural scale. First note, second note, I didn't write. Third note, fourth and fifth. So this could be used. I think, in my opinion, uh, in some folk songs, it is used. This is uh, the diagram for, I write all possible values can be used in Ushak and uh, Hüseyin'i kind of scales, uh, songs. But some of the, uh, some of these are not using exactly in the melody, but it can be used to uh, guarantee the just intonation chord. That's why I write them. So, uh, and th here you can see the all possible intervals, natural intervals. The T is Tanini, Apatom, B is Bakiye, is uh, Lima. And also some uh, tilde thing here is, these are very close to the, for example, here is very close to the uh, 14 slash 13. It's kind of 5 cent or something. So I think they can be used in melodic or harmonic approach. And they are the same thing in Hijaz. Uh, I think Hijaz is a very rigid thing, uh, a rigid tetrachord. First of all, uh, this is a Pythagorean from Pythagorean scale. La. Uh, this is rare from Pythagorean scale. I defined this. Uh, do this as major seventh according to one. So if this is major seventh, the one will be uh, re. So uh, it, it guarantees that the 16, uh, 16 slash 50, 15. And uh, I can define this also according to this or uh, it, this is some complicated. I, if I can define this according to this point, the reference point uh, will be changed here. There are some different definitions could be possible, but I choose this. Uh, uh, I take this as a fifth note, and the reference point is the uh, a major seventh of the natural scale. So it will be, I think. D sharp kind of so if I do this there's also the same as 16 slash 15 interval occurs here so, uh, 
because this is uh, I, I defined this according to D sharp because uh, it's kind of the, this is a hijaz scale and in for example Suzdin Makam two hijaz scales can be uh, combined from re, the D D sharp and uh, the other hijaz scale can be said and this can maybe explain uh, that Suzdin kind of uh, extended Makam scales. And here is also a major seventh occurs here between two notes. Uh, Karjar is very different. I, by the way, I use these notes to to refer reference the uh, for uh, to reference that I the scales to where I did be, uh, I explained before. Normally, Karjar scale is I think is this, but this is, has a different thing. This is a reference point, not third, five, or uh, this is just six. I, I cannot explain why this is like that, but I, uh, the this, uh, 138 cent is very uh, suitable with the performance choice. Uh, Canon players and tumble players, I all, all they. they uh, the, they say that they yes this is the right um, pitch for Karjar and these are again the scales I write I want to uh, make you listen some songs that I arrange but before the this I want to uh, make you listen you to uh, one of the arrangements of Tolga and Cholu for uh, guitar, uh, microtonal guitar, Hüzzam Sassemaisi he did. I want to make you listen to this because there are lots of uh, the symbols that I used here. Uh, I am playing now. I think you will be here. If you don't hear, please warn me. Sorry, we don't hear anything. Yeah, uh, excuse me, Suleiman. We don't hear anything. Did you, uh, um, when you connected, sharing screen, this little box, audio share? Uh, sorry, can you say again? You didn't hear? So, uh, when you uh, share the screen, mm -hmm. did you take this box? Uh, share audio. It's a very small one. I mean, it happens very often that we forget. Uh, no, no, I didn't see it. Okay, can then, you uh, then again, I mean, the again. first day I was about to go crazy. So small. Okay. Now again, I will share. I think. Okay. Share sound. Thank you very much. Okay. No. No, it's not uh, playing. I don't know why. Okay, I will. From PowerPoint, I will play. Can you hear it? No sound, unfortunately. Well, uh, 
Anything that I can do with that? Okay, I will share again. Sorry for that. Oops. Now I think you will hear, I hope. Can you hear it now? No sound, unfortunately. Well, I think it's better to share the uh, or let's try uh, this way. Sorry. No sound? Yeah, in two minutes, please. Yeah, now there is sound. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm continuing. Uh, if it, my time is uh, limited, you can warn me. I will just... Uh, some This kind of songs I will be listened. So this is kind of a... a Especially here is the Ushak Glissando style cadencing in the A. Uh, these are the notes for uh, to harmonizing. Yeah, the chord. This is a Hussein system, I see. I arranged for the Clotin guitar. Because in Muski there's not glissando, I write like that. It's normally a glissando here from two one to four three. <clears throat> This is Huzam and Sega kind of, especially here is a Huzam flavor. Mostly here, here is Sabah. Uh, for 
he just listen this. to show this this is again the same sasse maisi to just intonated chords i did some change here i, I want to make this <laughs> In my final project, I uh, investigate the Safiuddin Urmevi's Risale. Here, he is talking about some Mifrit uh, scale, or uh, yes, this can be played. Uh, a jeans that he wrote. I, uh, with that notation, we can wrote exactly the same. So Fitin is talking about Mufred jeans. It is they are uh, using exactly the I think natural harmonics. Uh, Mufred means I think uh, special to its own kind, kind of. So this is Grahavi. This is Isfahan scale that Safiuddin explains. You can hear by the quotation. Another Mufred genius is Zirevkand and Zirevkand the Kuchek. But uh, I want to tell about this. There is very small uh, interval here. I think that he is doing that because of the, the, the he want to put the pitch in a tetrachord or petrachord. But I believe one of these cannot be shouldn't be played. So I did some different trial. I will listen it. Uh, we go to questions in one minute. That we have five minutes for the questions at least. Thank you. Okay. And same things. And also one more thing is the uh, uh, Helmut's it is notation equivalents are also uh, showed in my presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, Suleiman, yeah, very, I like your, your ideas, uh, this uh, system uh, very much. And I would like to ask in the, in the group if there are any questions, uh, maybe my colleague, are we like, yes. That's no question, but it, I, think, uh, it's, I think it's a very good idea uh, to combine the you know, natural scale with the Turkish scale or Arab scales. It, it's very difficult, but as I could listen to, it's convincing, okay. That, it, it, perhaps it will go. It, it's an old question if you can play Arab music and Turkish music. Several voices with more than two or three. <laughs> this can be the way to this music, I think. Uh, uh, so I, so I couldn't hear. My... I think it could be the way to a polyphonic uh, oriental music. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I think my 
mm-hmm. purposes to yeah. mm-hmm. create that. Yeah. Okay, I'm asking, uh, any, any questions in the group? I'm trying to see, yes, we have four time for four minutes for the questions. Otherwise, if there's another track that you might like to show us, I mean, it's... Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, a question. I thought so, of course. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Yeah, hello, Suleyman. Um, actually, um, uh, it was my theme in my doctor uh, degree. Um, I did the same thing. I tried to make scale, uh, maqam, I call it uh, something like uh, overtone maqam scales. Uh, from the overtones uh, and I actually I wrote uh, orchestral pieces also for uh, um, overtone maqam uh, actually um, I did it in uh, perhaps a little bit uh, similar but also in different way because I um, it was for me very important to search for the fundamental tone uh, so for example if you are talking about uh, uh, Bayat, it's important to start, for example, from D or from Re, uh, and uh, not to start, for example, from uh, C, which is Do, for example. Uh, and uh, in this case, perhaps you will miss uh, the fundamental tone if you are taking it from a different fundamental. Um, for, for example, if you are starting from... Uh, um, let me say uh, 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 Siga from F, which is uh, the eleventh uh, overtone, um, and then I'm going up. In this case, I face the A, uh, uh, the A, which is La, and uh, which is not tuned um, uh, in uh, one and a half. And then you will have also. Uh, uh, perhaps C, it's okay, but you will have a problem with the A, which is uh, the um, uh, 16, uh, 15th and, yeah, 15th, uh, uh, 16th, oh, 15th, 8th, sorry. So, uh, did you try to, uh, I mean, I find that uh, you are doing like a modulation in overtones. You are taking another overtone, so you have, for example, a fundamental, with, which is C, and then you are taking another overtone, and you are taking tones from both. Um, I, uh, did, you, did you work with the energy of the overtones in this case, or no, you ignored, in this case, the energy of the tone? Well, I think... Uh Every symbol can uh, alter any pitch according to any defined uh, fundamental. Or I also the uh, that I showed. Uh, for example, I define the pitch according to the third degree, not the fundamental. Fundamental exactly. is also changing. Exactly. So in this case, the power, which is the fundamental, when I speak, the fundamental is uh, has the power. Uh, and if I start the uh, scale from, uh, not from C, from Do, for example, and I start it from uh, A, the A, uh, I miss uh, the string of the fundamental. Uh, so I'm talking about the uh, strength of the, the fundamental in this case, uh, which is you, which will be missed. Ah, you are talking about the sympathetic string if you y- use the fundamental. Exactly. I mean, right. uh, the power, uh, the energy. Yeah. Uh, also yeah. for me, it was important to search for the energy because, uh, for example, I, write an op- I wrote an opera and it was for me very important to search for the fundamental uh, when it's missed. So uh, it's okay. I mean, it's not a big problem, but uh, of course, the energy of the overtone would be less. 
Well, yeah, yes, I think you are right. But yeah. for example, I... Uh, uh, just you can uh, add it to uh, what you are doing. I think it would be uh, stronger if you search for the uh, missed fundamental. Of course, you have the uh, undertone also. For example, if you are moving from C to F up, it's not like moving from uh, F to C. I mean, from Fa to Do, not from Do to Fa, because Fa is an undertone. And uh, Fa, in this case, has Do inside of it. Inside of the overtone of the fa, there is a do. It's the third overtone. But do has no fa in the overtones. Now I'm talking. So I, mm -hmm. if I'm moving from C to F, I'm going to uh, lose energy. But if I'm going from F to C, I'm going to uh, gain uh, energy. An energy. Oh, okay. Um, uh, the idea between uh, overtones and undertones in this case, I mean the sound, um, um, the energy of the sound. So if, if I'm singing in a special tone and somebody would sing uh, Re, C, I'm singing C, uh, Do, and somebody is singing Re, for example, just uh, 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 a second uh, about me, it's not like when he's singing uh, uh, in the ninth. One octave and uh, second above me, which was uh, the resonance would be better. So all of these things, it's with the energy and how the maqam you can make it better. I mean, uh, to be honest, I wrote a piece and I suffered a lot because I should choose choose uh, the right uh, overtones and how this distant should they be, for example, from the contrabass or uh, from the flutes. Uh, um, and the maqam, how could it uh, flow inside of the overtone? Uh, because of that, I had sometimes to my, make uh, modulation. So, for example, if I'm uh, playing uh, 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 rust, I'll start with a do, and then if I move it to, uh, uh, to the A, I'll switch to an, an uh, uh, R, uh, overtone. So, the E inside of it, it would be inside of it. Uh, excuse me, Rami, can we continue this uh, discussion uh, just on, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry to do this, uh, otherwise you wouldn't hear me. Um, can we continue this uh, discussion on the chat so we can move on? Uh, yes. and I would like to thank uh, Su Su Suleiman, you say, Suleiman. Yeah. Yes. Ah, okay, I pronounced it in a bad way before. Yeah, congratulations, Suleiman. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much for accepting. Thank you for the comments, uh, uh, Rami. Congratulations. And uh, well, I don't need to, of course, even before I didn't need to present Johannes, <laughs> but uh, this time for sure, and I'm, I'm not going to read the, the biography again. I'm thanking Johannes uh, very much for a lot of work today. His uh, double presentation, the second presentation we are celebrating, uh, we celebrated last year. Actually, it's gonna be tomorrow would be the 101st uh, birthday, birthday of uh, Richter Herf. And, uh, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. yes. Uh, uh, symposium is up every two years. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, so I thought, okay, this is a wonderful gathering of uh, great people. And, uh, you know, we wanted to show a little bit about us and to, to show about the, the heritage of uh, Franz uh, Rita Herf and Rolf uh, Medel as well, of course, and, and all they, they did that we are sharing this uh, wonderful meeting today. So I thank very much, Johannes, for your work with the presentation, Franz Richter Herf, A Heritage. Please. Get camera, yes, to Franz Richter Herf in the background to see him. Yes. Can I see him? Okay. Are you okay with this? Um, mm -hmm. so, I suppose uh, the name Franz Richter Herf, okay, the name Franz Richter Herf is well known to you. Whoever is engaged in my paternal music, will be acquainted with his name and his creation, the Ecmelic Music. The 100th birthday last year uh, of his 
the anniversary of his birth is a valid reason for us to remember Franz Richter Herf and his life and his significant uh, contribution he made to the music of our days. Uh, uh, heritage, this word in German, uh, it has two different meanings. The first is Erbe, that's an inheritance, uh, that is something uh, we, an ancestor leaves to us to make use of it uh, to our best. And the other, in German, this word is Vermächtnis. That's a really great word that means uh, legacy. An important task, it's an important task we are called upon to take over and to continue the work as best as we are able to do. The Gmelic music is the life's work of Franz Richter Herr. And to me, it is inheritance as much as a legacy. During the last five decades, I accompanied the Akmelic music from its early beginnings. Uh, first as student, then as freelance collaborator at the Richter Health Institute for Musical Basic Research. And for the last 30 years as a chairman of the Akmelic Society, uh, as vice president now, and from uh, 100, uh, 1998, to 2009 had been the chairman. Uh, this society is still the organizer of our symposia and it had been, it took first place in 1985. Uh, and I'm glad that it succeeded in reestablish uh, this worldwide important meeting of microtonalists. You will understand why I regard it as my duty to use our meeting to give you a retrospective view on the life of Franz Richter Havner, who had been the creator of Ecmelic Music and the, of the Microtone Symposia. Franz Richter Herf was born uh, one, uh, 1920 in Vienna but he grew up in Zagreb, today the capital of Croatia, where he finished school. There he must have uh, had first contact with uh, Croatian music, folk music, especially the old songs and two voices, which had been sung in the peninsula of Istria. And he was deeply impressed, and partic particularly as they had been sung in tunings which considerably uh, differ from the common tune tune systems. Maybe that this experience had been the starting point of his activities in microtonality. But first, uh, he took up his studies in Vienna Music Academy, and after the end of the Second World War, he continued his study at Salzburg Mozarteum which had been a, a conservatory even at the time, not a high school or university as now. He had well-known teachers there, uh, Johann Nepomuk David and Egon Kornaut and Bernhard Baumgartner, and he got lessons in conducting by Clemens Krauss. 1949, he, already he was a teacher in theory of music at the Mozarteum, but it took, took uh, 25 years till he was appointed professor at the high school. In these years, he was busy in composing. Uh, he composed two operas, five concertos for solo instrument and orchestra, such as a piano concert, trombone concert, double bass, violoncello, woodwind, and one symphony, and a lot of piano pieces and works for mixed choir, for he had been the manager and conductor of a Salzburger Liedertafel for many, many years. Uh, in the beginning 70s, he took up his investigations on tone systems with deviating pitches, accompanied by his friend and colleague Rolf Mädel. Starting points once again were the old Istrian folk songs with the strange tunings, uh, but they also include music 
of Alois Haber, with, uh, who had left his tracks in the Salzburg music scene since 50 years in these years, when the first IGNM festival took place in the city of Mozart. Franz Richter Herr and Rolf Mädel found out that the uh, 72 octave divisions would be the best possibility to represent different tone systems. The uh, 72 pitches contain quarter tones as well as six tones and 12 tones, as well as semitones. And deviations from tempered intervals might achieve one twelfth of a whole tone of a uh, sixth part of a semitone. In this way, all intervals of a natural scale uh, could be described rather exactly with deviations smaller than six cents. They called a system ekmelic. This word is derived from the Greek and means ekmelos outside of a melos, a common, it's a melos, that's a common melodic uh, succession of pitches consisting of tempered semitones. This was a basement for further develop, uh, developments. Encouraged by his discovery, uh, he began to, think, to compose new pieces only in ecmelic music, and he began again with number one. Aus einer Sturmnacht, Opus 1, Six Poems by Rainer Maria Rilke for Soprano, Baritone, Mixed Choir and Orchestra. In his second opus, Welle der Nacht, the already mentioned folk songs uh, from Istria came to life again, repressed, represented in the two oboes. Uh, we will hear, if it's possible, uh, Welle der Nacht for Soprano, two oboes, string quartet and harp. Franz Richter Herbst, Opus 2, in Ecmelic Music, composed in 1973. We will manage. Mm. Yes, but uh, wait. I have no option for this. How, how come? Oh, yes. Okay. Excuse me. Um, wait. Yes, but uh, we need to share that the otherwise, we, okay, now it's there.
composition of the year 1973 when I came to the music to Mozarteum Salzburg to pick up my studies in piano and composition. Franz Richter Herf and Rolf Mädel had been my first teachers in theory. Uh, and in that time, they just had founded the Institute of Musical Basic Research at the Mozarteum High School. I still remember the order of the old staircase when I walked down uh, stairs into the cellar of the old Mozarteum building where the new institute was situated. And sometimes was, the order was uh, mixed with the smell of a pipe tobacco from Richter Herf and the cigarettes from Wolf Mädel. <laughs> I still remember it and in the neighborhood of this of the room of the institute, uh, where we packed this room for the brass students there. And Professor Herf and Rolf Mädel had much troubles to find silence moment to practice uh, new sounds on their instrument. They had uh, built uh, specially for the, for the studies in the new systems. There in the stark cellar room with windows near to the ceiling, uh, was a monochord and a polychord in the size of a canoe with 72 strings in an octave. It often had to be tuned again. And there was a small, a small pipe organ about one and a half octaves uh, with adjustable pi pipes. This organ was run by an electric motor of an old vacuum cleaner, <laughs> but it is a job. And there was a nearly a prehistoric electric tuner with two rotating uh, discs. Uh, you can hardly believe what, what it was like, but it worked too. The next step had been the construction of the ecmatic organ. Within two years, Reinhard Hanel, a friend of them, and was employed in the Mozarteum, realized the instrument corresponding to Franz Richter Herf's imagination an electric organ with three manuals uh, in a distance of a third semitone, similar to the six-tone harmonium that has been built for Alois Haber by Bohumil Förster uh, about 40 years before. Uh, but the Ecmelic organ had an additional button on the end of each key uh, to, to alter the pitch about one twelfth tone. That's, uh, and so the system allowed to play 72 pitches, uh, pitches of ecmatic music. There still exist two of these instruments, nearly 50 years old, and one is, uh, functionates uh, as well as it goes. Perhaps you have seen one of them uh, two years ago when I presented this instrument in the Mozarteum uh, University during the last symposium. And if possible, I hope I can show you this once more in two years. In the year 1979, uh, Franz Richter Herr was elected director of the Mozarteum High School. And from this time, the public interest in ethnic music grew considerably. Television and radio interviews had been made with him and the first Ecmelic opera, Odysseus, was performed in the Aula Academica of, uh, of Salzburg University. 
In the following example, we will hear a song, the song of the sirens from the opera Odysseus. Thank you. Okay, so let's see if it's clean. An example. <laughs> The new Ecumenic music by Franz Richter Herr was published in the edition Helbling in Innsbruck. And four records uh, had found a way to the music lovers all over the world. In the 17 years, it should, it should remain to the life of Franz Richter Herr. Uh, he composed 26 uh, new works in Ecumenic music. Amongst them, three operas, Odysseus, we have just heard, the Song of the Sirens, Callistaia, and Agamemnon. And two big works for orchestra, the Second Symphony in 1980, and the Ecnelia number no. three, for number no. four, 1986. Franz Richter was honored with a great medal for arts and science by the Austrian government in 1985 and of the Golden Medal of the Salzburg country. In the beginning of the 80s, the circle of interested people had expanded, so it was consequent to found a society, and it was the International Society for Ecnelic Music. It was the task of a new founded society to take care of the spreading of ecumenic music and microtonal music, and to promote rehearsals, lectures, and informations. In June 1981, just 40 years ago, the society started with 40 members. First chairman was Frau Elvira Herrn de Marte, the owner of the edition Helbring in Innsbruck, followed by Kurt Anton Hoever till 1998. I had joined the Akmelic Music uh, Society in 1987, and since 1991, I belong to the members of the board as chairman from 1998 to 2009. And International Society for Akmelic Music has also an introduced the Microtone Symposium 
in collaboration with the Mozarteum High School. And the first symposia took place from the symposia plural, uh, took place from 1985 to 19, 1993 as a biennial congress in the rooms of the Mozarteum. Some of the participants of the, these days uh, today take part of the of our symposium now, that's Ulf Dieter Soika and Gerhard Klösch. Uh, Franz Richter Herr, who was the initiator of the uh, Microton Symposium, could welcome the participants in the years 1985 and 1987, but uh, when the third Microton Symposium took place at the last week in 1989, he was critical already and too weak and to, to take part once more. He died some weeks later in his home on the 4th of July. First Peter Hesse, his successor, successor, took care that the Institute of Musical Basic Research at the Mozarteum University, which meanwhile had got a high international reputation, should bear the name of Franz Richter Herf from then on. From then on to, in, to its careless and, neg and negligent destruction. In 2004, one year after Professor Hesse has left the Mozarteum. It was the merit of the International Ecumenic Society and its presidents, Gertraud Steinkugler-Rutzinger and Agustin Castilla-Avila, that the microtone symposia could be reestablished once more, such as a collaboration with the Mozarteum University. In that way, I believe Salzburg may maintain its position as a center of new microtonal music. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much for presenting this very important. Yes, uh, maybe we can. You, um, you know what? I'm going to try to go around. Yeah, I risk it. The computer is a little old. So, yes. And the pitch. <laughs> yeah, we saw it on the previous video. <laughs> And uh, I'd like to ask uh, if there are any questions uh, in the group, and maybe I might say also some comments about uh, the society. I'd like to uh, thank yeah, you. That's a good idea. Any questions? Uh, yes. For some reason, my video is not possible to. Ah, you know, uh, I, it's my fault because uh, before us to start video, I think you might. Because uh, uh, sometimes, because of the connection, you know, ah, when okay. I see somebody, uh, you know. I, yeah, I understand that you, that you mute everybody. It's, it's not necessary to transmit video if it's not necessary. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. And uh, of course, uh, I have, I think. Uh, I, uh, I think five or six years ago or longer, I uh, I ordered the uh, music in the CDs from uh, Franz Richter Herf and also Rolf Mädel to our library in Tallinn, and uh, I ha I think I have to listen it again because it's very beautiful music. Uh, and uh, but my question is, as we uh, all know, uh, as uh, microtonal composers, it's still a challenge to get the musicians uh, to play uh, that music and I saw that okay in the 80s they made these beautiful recordings uh, with uh, whole orchestras and operas how how they achieved that were, were there special musicians and or special training method to get uh, get uh, get uh, the result uh, like this yes sir, well, uh, I have a book here but I can this one, maybe? Ah, this one. Okay, here. <laughs> Just here. Uh, you see, 
äh, Aufführungspraxis. It was a special paper Franz Richter have, uh, wrote for practicing. And we had the, the ecmatic organ, which was present at every uh, practicing. <laughs> so uh, the singers and the musicians could orient themselves and that's on self of the uh, pitches which are had been played by the ecmelic organ. I can't, I cannot hear you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is uh, this is good and, uh, and uh, so I will see, uh, maybe I have ordered also this book or not, I don't remember. If not, then I will uh, see to complete uh, this materials about uh, the uh, Salzburg Egmelic School. And Hans Richter Herr himself, he was a conductor of uh, how did this orchestra it was? Uh, Mutz Stiftung Mozarteum the orchestra, and, and he was a conductor and, and worked with the the musicians there, and he and he worked with the students, of course, whereas the opera being performed with the students of a Mozarteum high school. And even uh, the listening, uh, the hearing of microtones had been taught even in Mozarteum. I hope, uh, I think it will be taught now again for string players. This is a special lecture. Yeah, that sounds very great. Uh, that are uh, some tracks that exist now <laughs> in the Mozart here in high school. And what about, yes, uh, other practicing as a, for my music, it's not so necessary to use these instruments for a use of uh, natural scales and they are easy to hear and to practice. The Egmelic music uh, uses uh, parts of the 27 tones. The, the, they exist uh, Egmelic scales that are uh, parts of the overtone scales, but arithmetical, like the third, the sixth, the ninth, no, no, that's, that's wrong, the, the, the fourth, the seventh, tenth, thirteen. 16, 23, and such like. And when I put it together in the day, there is a new scale that, that's from Marie Franz Richter have composed his music. And it's very interesting. And you had heard of the harp playing in the first piece. It, it was uh, tuned in this way. And we opposed and they played and and they had practice it. But, uh, Yes, uh, I think I have one time I found this page on the web page where the Egmelic scales are uh, explained. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. I know to you. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, by the way, there's, a, there's also a fantastic um, um, page, an article uh, written by, done by Thomas uh, Richter, mm -hmm. the son for him. He's uh, in my opinion, I'm sorry, Johannes. Uh, yeah, I don't mean to compare anyone, but for me, he's the most efficient uh, in the in the Ecmelic society. Mm -hmm. He keeps everything so precise, and it's uh, we are very um, spoiled actually by him because we are used to. Uh, he does everything. He takes care of mm -hmm. of uh, so many things. Actually, they are. Uh, Thomas Richter. Our grandmaster. And, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, more or less uh, like this, actually. We, mm -hmm. we, we, he makes that, us feel very confident. And I would have uh, actually Johannes a question because uh, mm -hmm. Johannes uh, and, and uh, uh, Dita, of course, both, mm -hmm. I mean, they were here in the 80s, uh, very active, and they are both, uh, for me at least, that I came much later, you are, and I'm a little bit younger as well, you are institutions because you know so much history you you were there 
Mm. And um, That'd be the uh, first generation. <laughs> and when, for example, this that you just mentioned, Hans Gunther, mm -hmm. this is for me. I, I also ha have the same thoughts. Okay, how is it possible that in one hand they really had they could produce an opera? There was a lot of activities, but then on the other hand. I have the feeling that there was a huge improvement in the in the microtonal music, maybe not so much in the 72, in the ecmelic system. And what do you think? What is your vision, Johannes? Can you, and maybe also Dita, if he, he's there, maybe he can also share some mm -hmm. thoughts uh, mm -hmm. with, I don't see him, uh, Ulf, Dita. Uh, okay, he's not here at the moment, I don't know. I mean, it's impossible to be here every every minute. Hmm. I think uh, that the 72 pitches of uh, equal pitches of the Igmelic scale uh, will be a good uh, raster, we call it raster, masterstab <laughs> uh, to play the uh, several tunings. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, there's the possibility to transpose them everywhere. But uh, I think in our times, or like instruments like Igmelic organs, they are 50 years old and we have better methods to play just exact microtonal music now with our instruments. For the piano was an instrument, a mechanic instrument from the time of the steam engine and the electric organ is uh, of the first electric revolution, but now we are in the electronic era and there are a lot of things better to do than in the past. But I mean, actually, mm -hmm. at the situation, how you could see the microtonal, the situation, as, because as, uh, as 40, as, as 40 as members, I don't think we are so many, actually. I, I, I have to check mm -hmm. about the members. And by the way, I mean, if I can make a, a little bit of uh, marketing, a little bit of uh, publicity, verbum, mm -hmm. um, I mean, if any of you is interested in becoming a member, uh, I think it's about 20 euros uh, per year. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would be a very generous contribution for us. And uh, if you want to buy our books, for example, uh -huh. there's, uh, there's already 25% discount. And you're always, I mean, we don't know. I mean, we need, of course, financial support from, from institutions, but... We had this project uh, two years ago. We made this CD, um, this uh, Ecmelic CD, the homage to Richter Helf. That was from Leben das Beste, from Life the Best. And uh, anyone could participate in this kind of projects. I mean, it's open for everyone. We, we mm -hmm. make a call and, and all compositions we received from different members, uh, not living in Salzburg from anywhere, they, they were included. And there are some benefits, and of course, this uh, also is a lot of support uh, later on to invest uh, for for the for the edition of the books or for you know there are always many many small things. So I mean, if if you your institution, your university could become a member, we become stronger. And everything we are non-profit. -prof Nobody gets money. <laughs> Normally, it's the opposite that's, way. That's you know? a normal way in music. And, <laughs> yeah, and we invest everything that we are here, more or less, and we can share and and celebrate uh, microtonal music, of of course. And yeah, sorry, I interrupted with no, uh, no, with no, this no, sentence. But uh, it is very important to say. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, so how do you see the situation in the eighties? Because I imagine, yeah, in the 80s. Uh, when, when Rita Hay was rector from Mozarteum, mm -hmm. yeah, that was the golden yes, age. Yes, but golden is age. it really golden age? I mean, what do you see today mm -hmm. that you're missing and the other way around? Uh -huh. Yes, uh, I remember in the 80s, the, 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 spirit, the music of the Irkham uh, from... Uh, James Tenney mm -hmm. and Chrissy and all this. They had a special music, I made a special music. I was very interested in that music. And it was a, a new coming of microtonality as microtonality had stopped during the Second World War and was unknown in Europe then. Mm -hmm. uh, but not, not Carillo. Carillo was very because, famous yeah. Uh, yeah. and they got a... Um, 
a medaille in Germany then. Mm -hmm. But uh, the interest in microtonal music was very low. And since uh, a spectralist in Paris and even uh, a microton composer in Salzburg, they brought it to a new way. And this endured all the years uh, till, till the Institute for Basic Musical Research was closed. And this was an interruption in Salzburg, but uh, microtonal music had developed itself. In the beginning, in the 80s, we wondered why I compose in, in microtonal music that's only one small part of contemporary music, and contemporary music is the smallest part of music, classic yeah. music at all. <laughs> why yeah, should yeah. it compose yeah. like that? Yes. But at, uh, the plural variety of composers, they know about uh, microtonal music, and a and, uh, big part of them, uh, the majority, I think, they will want to compose microtonal or it's a really new way. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions from the from from the group? Okay. Otherwise, uh, we will let you rest. Take uh, take a little bit of energy. Uh, I mean, you're amazing, Hans Gunther. You are every minute with us. Uh. <laughs> we are very th thankful. <laughs> I, I especially uh, plan that this uh, five days uh -huh. I have to be uh, that's because that is the opportunity where I can uh, educate myself much better than uh, than I uh, um, can imagine. Maybe <laughs> in the moment, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm also, you know, there are small things with the organization, believe it or not, behind uh, the screen, the screen, and uh, yeah, uh, there's always something going on. And yesterday, very late, I was uh, talking to a friend, and then, oh, for a lot of work, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I said the same. I said, I'm sure I'm mm -hmm. learning. Microtonal music is just a small part of my work, and I'm very with just a one system I, and, and it's very efficient for me and I said to him no I'm sure I'm learning more than in a whole semester at a doctorate level at university and with the greatest masters these days and they are telling me everything yeah so I thank yeah. you for these master classes yeah we can learn from each other yeah. <laughs> yeah, and also in that time where traveling is not possible, I was uh, I, I thought about this uh, uh, this uh, practical workshop in West Virginia, where I also felt okay. Yeah, maybe I have. Uh, there was so interesting things I have never had that maybe since the last twenty years or something like that. And also the the in the same year I was in Salzburg and this was 2019 was an extremely uh, fruitful year for me in uh, in in this uh, uh, way of learning and uh, of course I I I I I was uh, I, I I wanted to go 2020 again to this uh, U.S. workshop but they had to cancel it and so. So that uh, that is uh, it's a little bit like a toast <laughs> in German <laughs> that uh, your conference that you decide to make it uh, make it online. Uh, yes, you know we mm. cannot have a beer or a pizza mm. or mm. You know, have human touch. Yeah. This is very mm. important. I see you three D actually. Yeah, but it has some uh, benefits from being online. Yeah. There's always something good, something bad. Okay, exactly. We can go the other way, mm. or maybe we can combine. I have no idea about uh, mm. anyway this year. And but the and online is better to uh, better to uh, not doing it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Of course. And it was for me amazing actually because uh, we. Uh, I have to say again. I I said this uh, two years ago when you came. Uh, you were so generous with us because you know the small money we get from from the institutions here we divide uh, and to make like grants and 
sometimes I had pressure from institutions saying, mm -hmm. hey, you should uh, have Congress fees like everywhere and these kind of things. I don't know. I don't. I, we started like this without these Congress fees. Yeah. Because I had a, I had a grant uh, from Estonia. Yes, and you refused that, and uh, was oh, yeah. what a fantastic person! What a wonderful person! Actually, so a gesture. Yeah. This year, even more amazing. Also, that to find out, uh, to get to know you. I mean, we've been uh, more in contact now. I'm sorry, I missed uh, also your lessons. Okay, I, I I go to that now. But you talking about your experiences as a yeah. your uh, 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 lecture. So for me, I mean, I have a different picture. I know you much better as uh, when we were in Salzburg. Actually, we are closer. Yeah. <laughs> also, I was thinking maybe uh, you, the uh, circle of people they can attend uh, online because uh, people are extremely uh, busy nowadays, and so uh, some people will think, okay, I cannot, uh, I cannot travel, but it is it, is online. I will uh, participate. Uh, so and uh, sometimes I have also seen in my teachings when uh, when. Uh, when this uh, situation was uh, like this, that uh, um, it was not fully locked down, but restricted and uh, nobody knows uh, who is uh, in quarantine. And so I started to make my lectures. Of course, it is technical, more demanding and uh, to make it hybrid. People, they come, uh, come uh, uh, physical, uh, people, they uh, uh, are o over Zoom. It's not suitable for every uh, t uh, t type of activity. It's, uh, of course, it's... Um, Mostly, uh, online teaching is much easier in uh, purely theoretical uh, subjects and practical, like this uh, singing together. Uh, uh, yeah, it is. A, it's a technical uh, challenge, of course. Yeah, by the way, singing mm -hmm. uh, for uh, solfeggio classes, uh, twenty-two EDO, uh, yeah. were amazing. Of course, I wanted to take a look. I had to take a look. And then, I mean, two things. Normally, I mean, in springtime, I was teaching at this time on Sundays. That was the only time I could teach. And it was the mm -hmm. daughter of uh, very good friends. And, you know, it was very difficult for me to say no. Mm -hmm. The other thing, I was very intimidated. I'm not a singer. And when singing, I got so <laughs> intimidated, actually. So I'm really sorry for, uh, for not being more active. But mm -hmm. it was because, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just a composer, more or less. Yeah, no, none of us are singers. It's a, yeah, it's a it, solo fair uh, class, not a singing class. Yeah, yes, we, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, but it was. I didn't have the confidence uh, to to sing. I have to tell you now, since a couple of years, I can't really, I can't sing a song. I yeah. really, something happened that I can really sing, but. Was something a stress uh, I think in this online class it you can do it like this you listen and mute your microphone and yeah. then I so I I yeah. also uh, sometimes if people uh, talk that like this uh, I, I said okay you mute, you can mute uh, if, if you think you are not uh, not good enough and you uh, think you, you are afraid you destroy the whole result and mute the microphone and listen and then it's just uh, just a training yeah, that's exactly my feeling to destroy you and you would get uh, angry at me mad at me or whatever that's of no. course but that's I will never be angry because it is it it, it was like an uh, like an round. Uh, we had no uh, uh, no uh, no uh, direct plan for to uh, for to uh, make some uh, really outcomes because I don't want to make uh, make stress. It's just just the more that we expose ourselves uh, to these uh, unfamiliar pictures, uh, the better we become automatically. And uh, of course, for uh, for maybe. Uh, and of course, the, the, uh, to control ourselves and the preciseness, there are limitations of our online. And uh, as the situ situation allows, we plan in uh, Perna mu Music Days where you are invited. And um, and uh, we plan um, we plan to uh, to uh, make there and sing uh, plan um, 
f with our Finnish colleagues or what whoever can uh, come to Estonia that uh, we uh, we uh, meet in uh, personal and then I think uh, it could be uh, more precise and hopefully uh, as much as we can as uh, non singers uh, um, be um, some things of uh, a uh, workshop choir. Congratulations, and this is a beautiful project. And uh, I would like to, Johannes uh, mm. Lief Monse, mm. so he has to take a bus soon. The last bus. Yeah. Uh, last bus. I so I, I would <laughs> like to um, uh, say, I mean, to leave it for today. And uh, I'm going to present also for the first time here uh, my own ideas. I will be very relaxed. Yeah, I will present a few pieces and wow. speak about some decisions uh, tomorrow. So you have a wonderful evening or a wonderful day, wherever you are. Thank you so much for your support, for tomorrow. your work, for your ideas, your thoughts. And uh, yeah, and thank you, Johannes, for two you. great presentations. And thank, you. Too, thank, you, yeah. thank you, Johannes. Was, uh, it was great uh, to hear you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so, ciao, Johanny. So, bye, 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 everyone. Bye. Okay. Everyone, ciao. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye.